number 15. When I was about 13, my mum and dad invited around all of our previous neighbours from the block of flats which we used to live in until I was about 5 years old. Anyway, I'd been sent to bed but could still hear everybody talking about this and that, until the woman from the neighbourhood said, Hey, John's mum. I'm John by the way. Do you remember when John used to complain of that there was somebody in his room? Well, there's a family that's just moved in on the floor above and they have a three year old son and he's complaining about the exact same thing that John used to. This creeped me out. I had no recollection of any of this so the next day I asked my mum. Her first reaction was, you don't remember? Then she told me about all the weird stuff that used to happen there, footsteps up and down the hall, shit which went missing and stuff. She said the final thing to happen was when she was listening to a record one day and it started to slow down. This was around Halloween too which really creeped my mum out. My mum said she finally snapped at this point, then she shouted, Will you leave us a fuck alone? As soon as she said this, the record went straight back to playing normally, and she never experienced anything paranormal like that again. I've never experienced anything like that since, and these days, I'm quite sceptical to such stories, but I believe my mum. Strangest thing is how I found out about it, from someone else 10 years later experiencing the exact same thing almost. Number 14. Well, when I was really little, my parents would let me stay up late on the weekends and watch the TV until I fell asleep. I really loved these times and I would stay up later than anybody else just because I could. Well, one night I was almost asleep on the couch when I heard a noise on our front porch. It sounded like the sound of an old fashioned porch swing moving back and forth. I was a little scared but I crept towards the bay of the window of my living room and peeked out towards the porch. Sitting on my porch, I shit you not, was an older woman probably in her 50s wearing nothing but a nightgown, covered in blood and holding up a huge kitchen knife. I immediately flipped out and ran screaming into my parents room but was too terrified to form words. My mum saw that I was upset. She thought maybe it was just somebody playing a Halloween prank on us or just a trick or treater because I was young but when I was finally able to tell them what I saw my dad got really angry and told me that it was just a dream and to go back to bed. I refused and kept crying and screaming until we had enough and snatched me by my arm, grabbed me towards the front door to prove that nothing was there. I kicked and screamed all the way there trying to make him stop but he kept pulling. Finally, we got to the front door, he unlocked it, swung it open and said, See, there's absolutely nothing that." To this day, I've never seen a look of horror or shock on his face like that before. When the woman was there, turned around, stared at us both and slowly stood there and raised the knife up. My dad must have been thinking, this wasn't a fucking Halloween prank, she's gonna kill us. My dad slammed the door shut, got my mum to call the cops and he gone and fetched his gun. He went back to the door and grabbed his 12 gauge and cracked the door open enough to stick the barrel out. He asked her what she was doing and she said, Somebody killed my husband but it wasn't me. My dad told her the police were coming and she freaked out, grabbed the knife and walked away. The police found her 15 minutes later though, trying to break into one of our neighbours houses. I never slept again in that room. Number 13. My family lived in rural Nebraska since they immigrated from Germany in the mid 1800s. Near the turn of the century, disease was pretty rampant in the homesteading area and it killed off members of almost every family. When somebody died from illness, time was of the essence in burying them to not let the virus spread from disease to the living. There were no periods of wake whatsoever. So, 
an aunt of mine of some unknown number of greats preceding her relationship to me dies of some disease and she gets buried in the family cemetery onto the homestead. The dogs were very fond of her and really loved her so it wasn't too surprising that after the funeral the two dogs stuck near the grave. The rest of the family began to think that something was off it. A week and a half later the dogs were still visiting her grave almost constantly but they weren't just at the grave. They were visibly distressed, frantic, often barking while there. This goes on for maybe two weeks when the family finally decides that they're going to check it out. They dig the casket up and open it. The deceased hair has all been pulled out. Her fingernails are raw and bloody and mangled from where, on the inside of the casket door, they can see deep scratches in the wood. She was Camatose when they buried her. She came to while being underground. She probably lived for the next five or so days buried alive in the casket. Number 12. When I was about seven years old, I went on a walk with my babysitter. We were walking back a mile or so to my house on a fairly busy road and about halfway there she suddenly says, we shall play Simon Says. At first she says to walk faster, then skip, then go jogging lightly. Then she says, Simon Says run as fast as you can, Simon Says turn here. I was slightly confused but played along. As we turned down the driveway, I looked back and saw two guys chasing after us one with a bat and the other with a large knife. We run up to the house and some old people let us in there thankfully. At the time I didn't grasp how lucky I was and fucked up it was that we were getting chased for our life and I literally had no clue. Number 11. Me and my roommate called Steve, we were having a pretty big party for his 30th. There's cake, balloons, weed and booze. We're having a great time when one of Steve's mates tells him that we'll give him $100 if he goes into the casino and gambles, but he has no one to go with. My roommate says, hell yeah. They get ready to leave, so does everybody else, so with that, the party ends. So eventually, everybody's left and it's just me. I clean up a bit turn off all the lights in the apartment except for the one in my bedroom, get into my nightwear and I'm sitting on the bed watching some TV. As I'm sitting there, I keep hearing this dragging noise followed by 15 seconds later a light plop. This goes on for another half an hour I'd say, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary, so I figured maybe it was just something wrong with the fish tank. I just think nothing of it. I think, well, it's near Halloween, there must just be people still partying around. When some movement by the bedroom door catches my attention, one of the balloons we used for the party, which has a big number zero on it, is sitting at the threshold of my door, seemingly to appear out of nowhere. I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck? That was in the complete other side of the apartment. It moves inside my room, dragging the plastic bottom on the ground about half a foot, floats up about half a foot, floats forward about a foot very slowly, and plops a weight back down on the ground. Then it just sits there, doing nothing, and a few minutes later, it would repeat it exactly the same. All this time I'm sitting there, horrified. The balloon continues to move forward towards me, until it plops down right at the edge of my bed and kind of leans in, right in my face. I jumped up and backed way the fuck up, searching for any logical explanation of what I had just observed. This balloon, over the length of an hour, moved from the living room, through the hallway and into my bedroom through the door, then continued where it leans into my face. I still get goosebumps thinking about it. Number 10. 
When I was about six or seven years old, my family decided to go on summer vacation up a little island in Maine. We rented out this old house on the water. From what I can remember, there were about six or seven other houses on the island. Everybody who lived there was 60 plus years of age, except for this middle-aged gentleman who was in his 40s who fished on the water. His name was Bubba. I shit you not. Anyway, the island was exceedingly creepy. Everything about the house was really old. Every piece of furniture from that house was probably over 70 years old. Not to mention there was no television running water. We used to have to go to a well and pump out to get our water. There were hundreds of books and pictures in the house, dated to at least a hundred years old even. To make things more creepy, there was an infestation of rats in the backyard that would run around at night. Also, whenever we made dinner, all of the old ladies who lived in the other houses on the island somehow knew, and would show up to give us blueberry pie and fresh fish which I had just caught. It was really creepy. It was as if somebody knew that we were going to do it and they would come over to us. Long story short, a few nights into our stay at this house on the island, my parents started hearing singing at the night. They said that it would start and stop about every 20 minutes or half an hour. They didn't think too much of it, just that it was creepy. The following day, they were asking around but they couldn't find out the source of the singing. The second to the last night in our week long stay, my whole family heard the singing. I did. We went outside to find out what was going on. It sounded like a choir of children. It really freaked all of us out but we didn't want to let it ruin the trip. It was just mysterious. But the next day, my dad starts checking out some old photos of the house and books in the library when he finds this old scrapbook dated to the early 1920s. The house we were living in was once an old schoolhouse and there was a picture of the boys choir. We all left that day. Number 9 It was on October 11th 2001 one month after 9-11. I was 14 years old and my grandfather died in his sleep. An empty bottle of whiskey was at his bedside. I was devastated. He was the best grandpa in the world and I could tell I was his favourite. At the funeral, I remember standing at his burial ceremony. I was a little further back than most of our family. I needed my space and I was grieving hard. I remember closing my eyes, folding my arms and burying my head in my jacket and crying. My mum put her arm around me and cried with me. I felt her, heard her crying into my cheek. Her voice mauled by my jacket. She let go and I opened my eyes and what I saw made me skip a beat. My mother was about 20 feet in front of me. Everyone was. I looked around and realised that I was completely alone the whole time. I don't know who hugged me. I think it is probably my grandpa, and I must have mistaken his voice for my mum's. To this day, I'm still confused and creeped out. Number 8. I grew up in a small town in Kansas since I've gotten the fuck out of. The town had tons of meth addict trailer trash there. One time, a good friend of mine spotted some creepy abandoned house on some road off several miles outside of town. It was near Halloween so we decided we were going to check it out. We were fucking stupid and decided to check it out. You could tell it was abandoned because the windows were all busted out and that. The front door was jammed shut but we managed to get in by shoving ourselves into it hard enough. The house smelt like chemicals. I'm not sure how else to describe it, but the air kind of stung your nose a little bit when you breathed in. On one moment, one thing I saw, I never gave it a second thought until later on. 
there was a metal can full of rocks with string around cutting across about a foot above in front of the doorway. We just stepped over it. We eventually made our way upstairs. There was broken glass all up the stairs and it cracked loud as we walked up. Yes, and aren't you thinking at this point we were dumb as fuck for not getting the fuck out of there with all these things that were acting as early warning systems and you're absolutely correct but we were some dumb 16 year olds who were a bit too curious. Anyway, at the top of the stairs we saw some scary as hell junkie. He was holding a handgun and freaking out. He was saying he was going to blow our heads off. We run the fuck out of there. So it turned out that we stumbled into a meth lab. Not only that, I've heard stories that the guy in there had killed his lab partner. Number 7 When my dad was younger, apparently he used to do a lot of hunting. He said that he'd given it all up one day. I never found out why until a lot later. He said that he was walking out there alone on his way back. It was pretty dark outside and he heard somebody whisper his name. He stood still for a moment and looked around and he couldn't see anybody there. He called out for anybody if they were there but he didn't get a response. He started walking again and he heard a grayling and then somebody said, you better start running, you're not alone. He stopped and looked around again, he couldn't see anybody, so he just hauled ass the fuck out of there and never went out hunting again after that. Number 6 When I was a kid, I had an imaginary friend named Jesse. I don't remember much about him, but my parents asking about him quite a lot and seeming quite concerned. Anyway, a couple of years ago while visiting relatives in Ireland, we were all exchanging ghost stories. My family seemed to have had a lot of creepy shit happening to them. When my mum brings up Jesse, so I was obviously quite confused and I thought he was just an imaginary friend I might have had. Well, my mum started off by saying how she didn't understand why I called him Jesse at I never heard that name before and she didn't know anybody who was called that, which I don't think was too weird. It was just a name, right? Then she said that one time my dad was on his way to work and he's an electrician in a mine at the time. I asked him to bring back coal for Jesse's gran. I was about two or three at the time so I wouldn't have understood what a mine was even if I knew he worked in one. The end of the story was of us saying when that we're on a day trip to some place we visited a lot when I was really young and suddenly I ran off and they followed me into a graveyard. I ran straight to a small grave and stopped on it and just stared at it and it was a grave of Jesse. I feel quite creeped out that I spent a lot of time as a child playing with a ghost possibly. Number 5 I'm not the overly adventurous type, but my friend is. Here's his story. He and a few friends of his went to an abandoned mental asylum hospital in our city. They like to explore abandoned buildings all of the time, so it's late one night and there's a field of tall grass leading up to the building. There are obviously no lights on in the building and there's just a really creepy aura about it. Two of the big black dudes that came with them stopped at the door and actually refused to go in at all. So they go down the halls and floor by floor there's nothing, nothing in any of the rooms but there is crazed mindless writing all over the walls in many of them. They finally make it to the top floor and it's nothing but a long pitch black hallway with a door at the end of it. They walk down the hall and being the crazy adventurers they are, they decided to see what was inside. However, it's the only building in the door which is locked. Multiple guys pounded and kicked at the door trying to break it open but it won't budge. One guy shines a flashlight through the keyhole or some sort of hole in the door to see what's inside. 
nothing except even more crazed writing on the walls that was visible only by the faint light. After failing once again to break the door down, they give up and walk back down the hall. When they get to the end at the stairwell, they hear the door fling open and slam against the wall. It's pitch black and the only thing they can see is a huge shadowy figure in the doorway. Then they hear thumping. Slow at first but the pace quickens. The figure is running towards them. They sprint down the stairs and they run faster than they've ever ran before. All the while, all they can hear a few flights above them is thump, 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 thump. They make it into the first floor and burst open the door when the two guys are waiting outside. They tell them to run and they all sprint and get in their van. They all pull away. They look out the window and see that the huge dark figure is still chasing them. Number 4 I used to go on midnight runs quite often. One day, I was doing one of them. I was on my way back when I realised that my shoelace was untied. I also heard that there was another runner, that was unusual, behind me. God, he's really quick I thought. So I just gone out of the way and started tying up my shoelace. I let him run past for a little bit, then I started jogging again. I need to hear what was a cop car behind me. The cops gone up to him and it turned out that they had just captured a guy who was wielding a machete running up the road. Apparently he was from a mental asylum. Number 3 This happened to me about 7 years ago when I just started high school. The school I was at was about a 10 minute walk from my little brother's school so Every day I would walk up there to meet him. I felt pretty safe walking along a main road with lots of sunlight and cars but not that many people were about. Occasionally you would get some other school children or some runners and some old people walking their dogs and stuff coming past or people just waiting for the bus. The bus stop was halfway between the school and my brothers and there were only ever about two people waiting there. One afternoon, I was walking up to meet my brother and I left my headphones at home that day so I couldn't listen to music while walking. So I just enjoyed the sun and the pretty plants in gardens. When I reached the bus stop, I noticed that there was an old man sitting on a bench waiting for a bus. I passed him and didn't think much of it because he seemed harmless. I'd say this guy was about 60 or 65 years old, short and not very fit. As soon as I walked past him, I heard him get up. I didn't see a bus coming, maybe he was just checking the timetable, but of course not. I turned my head to check and this guy is literally 5 steps behind me, with his eyes locked onto me. I started to speed walk, but I heard him do the same. I looked behind me to make sure he's not there but he's speed walking as well. I was scared, I didn't take my eyes off him and he didn't do the same either. I looked back and he was still giving me that devilish grin. I was then about 200 meters away from my brother's school and decided to bolt it. I looked back and the old guy was running, I couldn't believe it. He was a lot faster than I expect him to be too. Every time I looked back he was staring at me smiling. I was so scared I was almost in tears I wasn't going to make it. Being young, I could outrun an old man in his 60s, but with a school bag weighing me down, it messed up my knees a bit so I couldn't run as quick as I wanted to. By this point, I could see my brother's school and some kids leaving. I was kind of relieved and thought that the old man was going to ease up and notice that there were other people around, but no. This guy starts yelling to people saying, my granddaughter, she's running away from me, get her, she's in trouble. All the while he has this evil grin on him. I then stop because I come to a massive road and I don't want to get hit by a car. The guy decides to get close enough so he can grab my bag and tell me, stop being such a little prick. And then he was going to win and take me away. I screamed and ran for my life, not caring about cars. I got into my brother's school and looked back, he was still jogging towards me. 
I ran into the main building and told the receptionist everything what happened. She had a look outside and pointed to a man waiting outside the gate moving his head around as if he was trying to spot somebody. It was him. I told her and she called the police. The man walked away after about 10 minutes but the police did catch him and we found out that he'd been offering candy to kids from my brother's school and trying to get them to come home with him in the afternoons. Number 2 Me and my friends knew about an abandoned mental asylum sort of close to where we all lived. Being as it was Halloween, we all really wanted to go there and see what we could find. As we were getting there, I started to get this strange feeling and I become really anxious. Anxious to the point where I didn't even want to go in there. The grass was really long and tall, not much surrounded it and it just looked like it was evil, I don't know how to describe it. We were going in there anyway and we just got into the front door but the anxiety got too much for me. So I decided I was going to wait out the front for my friends to return. I wasn't really sure if they were going to find anything, but anyway, they went in there and I was just sitting there, bored on my phone, when all of a sudden a man comes. Shit, he knows we're not meant to be here. It was a hospital worker. Fuck, there's another hospital close to this, so maybe he's just from that building. He offered me a cigarette and said if I had a light, I said no thank you. I went to turn around to check why my phone was vibrating and just as I looked back, he was gone. He literally disappeared. I went round looking for him and there was no sign of him. And not only that, where I turned around to check the hospital so at the back, there wasn't any. I was wrong. The closest one was literally miles away, much further than I ever anticipated. Then it struck me, he wasn't dressed like a normal doctor would be nowadays. He was dressed from the 50s, you could tell with the white type of outfit he had on. So I thought I'd be safe on the outside, but I probably ended up having a worse experience than the guys going in did. Number 1 It was close to Halloween night, it was a day or two before and me and my friends were just walking around, we liked the fact that all of the decorations were up. When this guy come up to us pulling a prank, he looked like he already had his Halloween costume on. It looked like he had been shot. We all laughed, but then when he told us that he needed us to call the cops and collapsed on the floor, we realised that this wasn't a Halloween prank at all. The guy had literally just been shot. Number 2 